Hi, I want to spend a few minutes talking about what's going on in the market liquidity. There's been a lot of talk about stressed liquidity in the financial system. What are the facts and what are the implications for us uh, in portfolios? Well, the fact is that liquidity is very tight. Now, liquidity can be measured in many ways and the RBI's way of measuring liquidity is what's called overnight liquidity, the rate at which money is borrowed on an overnight basis. But that does not translate really well into the market. The overnight liquidity is essentially what's called interbank liquidity, the rate or the amounts which are borrowed between the banking system. But what really matters for the markets is the amount of liquidity available and the rate for bank and its customer transactions. That is to say, what's going on with FD rates and FD amounts, what's going on with uh, bank loans, and what rates they are happening. And if you see what's happened over the last few months that RBI has cut rates by 75 basis points, FD rates have hardly budged. The MCLR, which is the marginal cost based lending rate, has hardly budged, which again indicates that both lending rates and deposit rates have not come down despite 75 basis points of rate cuts. Uh, why is this happening? Because in our view, it's happening because of very tight liquidity. Tight liquidity essentially has stopped transmission of rates. You've got RBI rate cuts, it's not getting transmitted into the economy and thus these rate cuts are not doing anything to revive the economy which is sort of the objective of these rate cuts. What are the symptoms of this tight liquidity? For one, if you see the deposits and credit offtakes of the banking system, normally for every 100 rupees of deposits that come in, close to 20 rupees gets parked by way of SLR, CRR, etc. and 80 rupees is available for lending. Last financial year, the ratio of new loans to new deposits was close to 100. So about 99. What that suggests is that the banking system lent out virtually every rupee of new deposits that it took, did not set aside any money in the form of SLR, CRR, LCR, etc. You go back a year before that, in financial year 2018, that ratio was at about 112, which means that the banks were dipping into their existing stock of SLR, CRR to make new corporate loans. So two years in a row now, the deposit mobilization has not happened. So what happens as a result of that? Rates remain high. What happens as a result of that? Rate cuts don't get transmitted into the broader economy. We see this across the curve. We see this in rising credit spreads. We see this in rising uh, AAA yields. The spread between two-year, three-year AAA corporate bonds to the repo rate is running at multi-year highs. The rate at which AA corporates are borrowing relative to AAA, the spread between AA and AAA bonds is close to the highs that we have seen since the global financial crisis. What all this means in terms of portfolio management is, of course, from an investor perspective, it's great news. Despite rate cuts, the market yields still remain elevated, which is fantastic if you are an investor in bonds. Well, not so good news if you are a borrower, but certainly if you are a buyer, it seems to be very good news. This also means that if the RBI does change its stance to add more liquidity into the system, uh, uh, you could see significant gains if and when these yields drop. So we see this tight liquidity environment as an opportunity for short-term bonds and that's how we are positioning most of our portfolios. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.